What's the best type of cardio for fat burning? So in this video, we're going to cover, cover the five different zones of fat burning and which substrates of energy that each zone particularly uses, from fat oxidization to fat adaptation, which type of energy substrates, fat, carbohydrates, that your body is predominantly using as energy. So this is going to give you an absolute clarity. This is going to be an in-depth scientific breakdown of what type of cardio burns what type of energy substrates. So my name is Adam Bunnell. I'm an online fat loss professional. I help career-driven men break fat loss plateaus and get to the leanest body fat percentage they've ever been using high-level forms of nutrition, metabolic priming, and metabolism manipulation and hormonal priming. So I've worked with quite literally dozens of guys in getting them to the leanest body fat percentage they have ever been using high-level forms of tracking data, KPIs, metrics, and giving their body exactly what they need to get to the leanest body fat percentage they've ever been. So there's going to be tons of information linked in the description of this video below with my metabolic priming master class, my in-depth tutorial on metabolic priming and how it works. There's going to be my client testimonials, my client case studies, and there's going to be a link for you to sign up for a time one-on-one -on -one with me to book a fitness strategy call and see if uh, what I do can help you. So in this video, we're going to cover in-depth all of the zones of cardio. So buckle up. We're going to cover a lot of information. We're going to dive right into the science to so make sure to watch all the way through this video. So the first zone out of five, zone one, low intensity cardio like light walking or pedaling. So beta oxidization usually happens at a low intensity cardio. Fat oxidization, the actual process of burning fat, happens more predominantly at the lower zones of cardio. So in the form of you know walking or jogs, light jogging, you can utilize burning actually more fat substrates, right? There's a significantly lot more loss of fat being burned at a lower intensity cardio, like walking, right? So they even did a study that 40% more fat is actually burned at a lower percent of cardio in a, like a zone one or a zone two. So basically what low intensity cardio does is condition your body to burn more fat than carbohydrates. It increases recovery and blood flow, and it works best at a fasted state. So Think of your body as one in a low intensity cardio, utilizing more actual fat to burn as fuel. So if you're at a, you know, deficit or you're in a fasted state, you can utilize low intensity cardio in the form of walking to get your body to tap into those fatty acid triglycerides, mobilize them into the bloodstream and oxidize them by utilizing more fat. So think of your body as if it's in a glucose depleted state to tap into another form of glucose, which would definitely be the fatty acid triglycerides hanging out in the cellular activity of your cellular fat. So it releases the fatty acid tissue. Um, into your bloodstream and you're able to oxidize that fat very, very well. So that's why I have all of my clients doing a certain steps per day. So, you know, getting into zone two, zone two isn't terribly different than a zone one, which would be like more walking. Zone two would be more of, you know, an inclined treadmill, which your heart rate's getting a little bit more up there, like at a 60 to 70 percent, but you can still hold a conversation very well and you can still utilize fat very well. But the benefit to zone two is a little bit more conditioning on the body. It also reduces a level of lactate and so a less need for actual use of carbohydrates and a less need for actually inflammation and fatigue. So a lot of people that get in trouble of doing cardio, they start with doing very high intensity cardio like running or long forms of incline treadmill because there is a certain point when your body needs to tap into more burning carbohydrates even if you're doing a you know, zone two cardio for an extended period of time, right? So the lower the zone is, the less lactate buildup and the less inflammation buildup on your body. So having less inflammation is extremely important because inflammation and oxidative stress in the form of adrenal fatigue will prohibit you from actually losing body fat and the lactate buildup will actually prohibit, prohibit you from losing any body fat in general. So low intensity cardio in the form of zone one and zone two helps with burning calories, more specifically fat, at a lower intensity state that is non-inflammatory, right? So zone one and zone two is very, very beneficial for beta oxidization and fat, adapt fat adaptation and actually getting fat to be burned. The only caveat behind it is that zone one and zone two usually takes a little bit less 
more time to do. So you have to spend more time doing it. And the more time that you spend doing it, the more you get into a zone three or a zone four. So many of my clients are in certain regimens to make sure that we, one, are doing certain zone one, zone two, zone three, so that we can monitor also their inflammation in their body, the lactate buildup, but also make sure that their body is predominantly using fat as a source, right? So like I said, we're getting into a fasted state when your body is highly glucose depleted. When it is glucose depleted and its primary source of energy is fat, the body wants to tap into actual fat storage to burn it in as energy, right? So in zone one and zone two is perfectly the best beneficial for that exact reason, right? More predominantly, zone one is more beneficial because it actually oxidizes more fat, but it just takes a little bit longer. When you get into zone two, you get into the lactate threshold and pushing the lactate threshold a little bit more, which can lead to a little bit of inflammation if you're not careful and not weary and not watching your progress and not monitoring your body increasing, you know, watching the caloric intake to make sure you're getting good recovery. So let's get into zone three. So what is zone three? Zone three is more of higher intensity cardio, 70, 80%, which usually utilizes more faster twitch muscles, but zone three burns more carbohydrates, right? And it's more of like a metabolic ramp up, which can lead to more muscle waste for, you know, people who, you know, do more zone three cardio in the form of, because zone cardio typically what it is, is even like your high intensity training in the form of weight training, right? So think about your weight training in general, like it breaks down muscle tissue, it's very high twitch, and you utilize more carbohydrates burned in a zone three than a zone two and a zone one, right? So utilizing zone three to actually burn carbohydrates, but also making sure that you're getting good heart carbohydrates in to reduce the inflammation because lactate builds up a lot faster in a zone three cardio. So zone three cardio is very good at well in increasing blood circulation at a cellular activity, increasing conditioning and you know building performance, but it's not as good at actually burning fat right? So think about your strength training in general. You're breaking down muscle tissue, you're getting a metabolic ramp up, and you're actually utilizing burning more carbohydrates than actual fats, right? So in the scientific terms, if you're breaking down the more, more of the muscle tissue, getting more metabolic ramp up, and you're fueling that, that, cardio, or that cardio at zone three in the form of strength training with good nutrition, good recovery, and you're building good muscle tissue in the form of actually getting good carbohydrates in, you're able to, one, grow muscle tissue, which muscle tissue is highly glucose absorbent. It's also very highly metabolic. It takes eight calories to sustain one pound of muscle tissue. It takes two calories to sustain one pound of body fat. So in zone three, it's predominantly good at, you know, making sure to utilize more carbohydrates burned, but also utilizing more faster twitch muscles, growing muscle tissue, and increasing more muscle tissue volume, which has a more of a metabolic ramp up. So, you know, zone three is a fantastic for you know actually burning carbohydrates in the form of strength training so getting into zone four zone four would be more of your high intensity interval training also known as hit right so in zone four you're about 80 to 90 percent of effort right my the lactate buildup in zone four is extremely fast it's extremely quick but it also has a mitochondrial biogenesis effect which puts you into a deficit very fast because you're burning carbohydrates at a very faster level right so think about it like this the higher the zone gets the more carbohydrates you burn right so the more carbohydrates you burn the higher the intensity is so understanding what burns what what energy substrates you are using to burn fat burn you know carbohydrates is you are able to one utilize both to burn carbohydrates in the form of putting yourself in to a deficit very fast and then making sure that to not also build up in lactate with one, a zone one, which is going to basically decrease lactate and increase recovery and increase blood flow, but also make sure that you're burning fat in a low intensity cardio state like a zone one or a zone two. So zone four, people who are doing high intensity, high intensity interval training, they get into trouble because they, they live or die by it, right? They live or die by it, which means that they're doing it, you know, through the week, 
they're you know strength training and doing hit training and now they're building up a ton of lactate a ton of inflammation on your body a ton of oxidative stress and a ton of cortisol so why do you want to stay away from cortisol when you're trying to burn fat because cortisol is the number one hormone in the body that will prohibit you from losing body fat but also prohibit you from gaining muscle tissue right there is a muscle wasting effect when it comes to building up of lactate and building up of cortisol where the body when it gets too much lactate built up it wants to revert to burning protein as its main fuel source. And if there's not enough protein available in the body in the form of nutrition, it'll start utilizing actual muscle to break down its energy, which gets into people getting caught in the skinny fat phase where they're doing tons of cardio, they're eating little amounts of food that will, you know, they don't have enough nutrition to actually mitigate inflammation levels and mitigate lactate levels. And then they get into trouble with, you know, actual, you know, Met- metabolic reasons because their metabolism is so shot because they've downregulated all their hormonal, you know, issues and now their body is in just a state of per- peril and they it can't get out of, you know, an oxidative stress state and, you know, then that's when you kind of get stuck in a fat loss plateau. So I predominantly work with guys who have been stuck in a fat loss plateau eating 2000 calories doing tons of high intensity cardio. And you can definitely tell when I take a look at their photos, their body just looks highly inflamed. So what I specifically do for those guys is set them to a low intensity cardio like a zone one or zone two, add some more food to decrease lactate and de- decrease oxidative stress. And in tons of cases, they lose 35 pounds eating more food and doing less cardio, right? And you can check out some of my transformations and some of my testimonials and it's absolutely wicked. Like they're just mind blown that they're eating more food, doing less cardio and getting to the leanest body fat percentage they've ever been. But that is the importance of understanding what your body needs in the form of zone one through zone five cardio, but also in the form of nutrition aspect of protein, carbs, and fats to where your body is utilizing certain energy substrates so you can get leaner, right? So everybody's body works differently. Everybody's body has a certain type of anaerob- anaerobic threshold, a lactate built up where at a certain point that you need to know when to switch to a certain cardio. And that's especially what I specialize in is understanding the science be- behind that, understanding the science of metabolic adaptation, understanding the science of lactate buildup and a- anaerobic threshold, and understanding what your body needs in the form of zone one, zone four, to zone four to zone five to actually get leaner, mitigate lactate levels, and actually get lean and stay there for good, right? So then the, la- the last zone is just zone five cardio. So there is not really much benefit for from zone four to zone five. Zone five is just 100% of your max, right? Max heart rate. So it's specifically, you know, from a fitness aspect, there's really no difference between a zone four and a zone five. Zone four would be probably more, you know, beneficial from an overall fitness lifestyle. But zone five has a particular case and use among certain athletes, right? So, you know, zone five is specifically good for explosive movements, training explosive movements and quick and athletic performance, but there's not really much of a benefit from an overall fitness standpoint. It's very beneficial for actual athletic performance, explosive movements, and, you know, for athletes in general, the athletes that I train, it's just way much, way beneficial, more beneficial for actual overall athleticism in general. So understanding the four, the five forms of cardio zone one through zone five, you're able to understand what your body needs to burn at certain energy substrates, understand what your body needs to, when you get to a certain anaerobic threshold and you get to a certain, you know, lactate buildup. And if you don't understand that fully, that's when your body starts to, you know, dig, digress lose muscle tissue and that's when you kind of get stuck in a fat loss plateau and kind of you know spin your wheels for a while so understanding what type of cardio is more beneficial for you and everybody's body works differently I've worked with tons of people and certain people work better from a zone one and a zone three and certain certain people we have to implement zone one and zone three cardio for their body to burn carbohydrates and and fat so that we can put them in a glucose fasted state and then get their body to utilize more fat adaptation and actually fat mobilization and fat oxidization. So understanding these certain factors, extremely beneficial. But the most important thing is understanding what you need to be putting in your body to be getting out of your body. So understanding the actual nutrition part of things and understanding what your body needs to reduce lactate levels and reduce inflammation, but also make sure that you're optimizing performance, optimizing hormonal control, and optimizing basically your whole hormonal profile in the form of nutrition. Too many people do not have the understanding of what they need nutritionally and what they need to even do cardio-wise, and 
that's why they get stuck in, in, in fat loss plateaus and for months on end or why, for instance, they make great progress, drop 20 pounds, and then they just gain it right back because they aren't really using fat adaptation and metabolic adaptation in the form of metabolic priming and metabolism manipulation to actually get to where they need to do long term and stay there. So if you are struggling to get lean and you don't really have a clear plan on zone one through zone five cardio or you don't really know what you even need to eat, you know, calorie rise in the form of protein, carbs, and fats, because you could be tracking your calories with MyFitnessPal, and but if you're tracking without a goal and then actually scientific knowledge of what you need to be hitting protein, carbs, and fats, you're really tracking without a goal. And with, if you're tracking without a goal, that really doesn't mean anything, right? You're just kind of trying to hit a number you can't see. So if you need help with this, um, there's going to be a link below so you can sign up for a time one-on-one -one with me. We'll break down where you're at, <clears throat> where, you, where you're trying to get, what's stopping you from getting to the leanest body fat percentage you've ever been. And I will build you out some high-level nutrition strategies. I'll build you out some, some cardio regimens, what your body specifically needs to get there and actually stay there long term. Because if you want to get lean, you need something a little bit more customized and a little bit more tailored to what you actually want to do because everybody's body works differently. I've worked with dozens of clients and everybody's body needs a certain different type of macronutrients and a certain different type of cardio in the form of zone one through zone five to actually get the max output and get, get to the lean physique that they've always wanted to get. So I hope you liked this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Go watch my full metabolic priming masterclass link below. Um, but I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching this video.